Hello. Uh, I am super f professional, which is why I'm way, way on time. Um, yeah, this is not what I had planned on playing today, but I'm going to try playing Cryptid Apothecary. Uh, and I am attempting, hopefully it's working correctly, to stream this both on the HamPod channel and on uh, Even Footing Games. So here I am. We're going to try this. Uh, it is kind of a last minute thing. I am both shocked and odd to see people here this morning, especially people who knew about this and haven't been waiting at all. The concept of this is that I am like an old-timey apothecary doctor person uh, maintaining a record of the magical remedies that I make to treat the unique ailments of my non-human patients. And this is a journaling game, but uh, because I'm playing this on stream, I'm probably just going to talk it out, because that makes more sense. Yeah, way to be caught up, Artemis. It's always good. All right. Um, so this one's a little bit different than other solo games that I've played. Uh, you still use the standard 52 card deck, excuse me, but uh, yeah, I don't think we have alert command set up, sorry. Um, I have my deck divided into the four suits, which is a little unusual, um, but first I'm going to draw a heart to meet my patient. So, got the queen of hearts for our first one. And how do I know? Ooh, okay. Uh, Queen of Hearts is the Jersey Devil. It gives a description of kangaroo body, horse head, bat wings, claws, horns. Which is a pretty good description of the Jersey Devil, if I'm being honest. Um, next is spades, which is their ailment. I got the jack of spades. So that would be hair grows at an accelerated rate and gains autonomous motion. Okay. That's uh that's something. Um Okay, so this part I get to just kind of make up uh take a moment to jot a few notes in your journal about your consultation. How long has your patient been experiencing symptoms? Uh, I'm going to say that the Jersey Devil has been experiencing this since, like, Friday. Because today's Sunday, um, and I'm just going to, because it's easier in my brain to say it's the same day. Um, since Friday, and they decided to finally come and get it checked out. Um, they've been coping by vigorously shaving, and it does not help because the hair just grows right back. And, ooh, uh, what unrelated yet charming anecdote did they share with me? Mmm. Let me think on that one. I don't know. Also, thank you. They're the same cards I used for um, Together and Alone Among the Stars. They're just, like, cheap cards from Walmart. But I do like them. They have a nice sci-fi look to them, which is not super cryptidy, but you know, it is what it is. It's the ones that I had handy. Okay, uh, I roll the six-sided die to determine how many clubs I draw. These are my materia magica, or ingredients in boring terms. Uh, so there's three. So, it does it kind of weird. Uh, if you get a one or a two, it's two clubs. If it's a three or four, it's three. And if it's a five or a six, it's four. I don't really like that. I think I would just draw however many I get on the dice, because that's, again, easier for my brain. But, uh, yeah, I drew three. Got a three. And, oh, interesting. Uh, I pair a randomly drawn diamond with each club and note the combinations. So, I'm just going to slide without looking at them. One behind each of the clubs. Ooh, okay. 
Um, this is interesting. So I pair those together. Um, I can roll my d6 twice for instructions on how to take the remedy, which I think, let's look at our pairings first and see what we've got. So first we've got clubs. So five of clubs is dream sand and it's paired with the Ace of Diamonds, so it's a tincture of Dream Sand. Um, and we've got the Eight of Diamonds, so that is Sun Soaked, and the Seven of Clubs, so it's a Sun Soaked Siren Scale. Holy alliteration. And last but not least, <laughs> We have the seven of diamonds, so it's Julianne. So much alliteration. Uh, and then we've got the ace of clubs. So it's Julianne ectoplasm. I'm not sure how you Julianne ectoplasm, but we did it. We did it somehow. So how do we take these? So the first one, I'm going to see five and two, so seven. So our tincture of dream sand, we keep beneath our pillow for nine consecutive sleeps. That makes sense. That's a solid one. Six and two, so eight. <laughs> uh, after taking the however we take it, I don't really know, it doesn't really say, uh, at the sun-soaked siren scale, uh, the Jersey Devil has to avoid eye contact for at least one week after taking. And another seven. So uh, the last one, which was the Julianne ectoplasm, they also keep under their pillow for nine consecutive sleeps. So. Dream Sand and Siren, or not Siren Scale, uh, Julianne Ectoplasm. So, I think that's it for that one. I think we've cured the Jersey Devil of their rapidly growing hair, I believe. Let me look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did it. Go me. I am the best doctor to ever doctor cryptids. So, having cured the Jersey Devil. Um, I think maybe the anecdote they share is uh, about one time they went down to the Jersey Shore and they saw a siren soaking in the sun. Um... And how they were really tempted by the song, but you know, Jersey Devil uh, does Jersey Devil stuff. Maybe they weren't like totally drawn in by it. So, one cryptid down. Let's get another patient. Ooh, we've got the Ace of Hearts, which is. Oh, interesting. Uh, I've never heard of this one. It's the Buru, B-U-R-U. -U. It is roughly three feet tall. It's a bipedal lizard with a penchant for Hawaiian shirts. And you know what? I need to look this one up because I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I want to know if this is a real cryptid. Or if it's one they made up. Because either way, holy crap. It is, I don't know who these people are. Okay, um, interesting. 
It is apparently a mythical creature from the Apatani people who live, um, where did that say? Uh, they are one of the major ethnic groups of the Eastern Himalayas. So why they like Hawaiian shirts is, uh, I don't know. I'm a little confused by that, but I'm okay with it. Um, interesting. Yeah, it's like a crocodile-like creature. Um, oh, sad day. They had to drain the swamp and they destroyed these creatures, apparently. Or they thought they did, and obviously they didn't do the best job because uh, they still are around, it seems. Anyway, we're going to treat this little lizard guy or gal or they or whatever they happen to be. Um, let's see, our next thing, draw a spade to determine their ailment. Got the five of spades, which is <laughs> regurgitation of random objects at inconvenient moments. It's delightful. I love that. This is why I got into faux apothecary medicine for regurgitation. Um, I'm going to say that this Baru basically started doing this and came here immediately because why would you why would you start regurgitating and then just be like oh, I'm not going to go to the doctor this is fine everything's fine um maybe that's just me maybe I have more common sense than some people but uh they've been coping by coming here and uh charming anecdote Huh. I'm going to say maybe they talk about uh, when their swamp was drained, how they moved to the U.S., not Hawaii, uh, probably like Southern California, and they found Hawaiian shirts uh, to be very handy at helping to hide their identity. So... Let's see how many cards. Ooh, only two. So we're going to draw two of each of these. And let's see. What do we got? So six of diamonds, a room temperature, and a jack of clubs. Uh, oh, a room temperature black orchid. Okay, makes sense. And five of diamonds is a pygmy goat's weight in. Ten of clubs is adder stone. So a pygmy goat's weight in adder stone. Okay, uh, again, gotta look that up because I don't know what that is. Ooh. Adderstone is a type of stone, usually glassy, with naturally occurring a hole through it. That's cool. Thanks, Wikipedia. They're commonly found in northern Germany uh, and on the coasts of the North and Baltic Seas. Also called hagstones, which stones serpents' eggs, snakes' eggs, and a whole bunch of things in different languages. <laughs> Uh, in Germany, they're called Hunergotter, uh, chicken gods, which makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, but I love it. Yeah, uh, the weight of a pygmy goat in chicken gods, <laughs> like you do, just casually on a Sunday. Um, yeah, so. How do they take these? Let's figure that out. Ooh, 11. 
So the first one, um, I've already forgotten what it was. Oh, a uh, room temperature uh, black orchid. They take while walking Wittershins around a stranger's home, which is a very cryptic thing to do. Um, both walking Wittershins and walking around a stranger's home. So that tracks. And four and one, so five. <laughs> uh, they have to eat a pygmy goat's weight in chicken god stones uh, as second breakfast. That is their second breakfast. Everyone loves eating rocks for second breakfast, or so I've heard. Yeah. Uh, so my little Baru friend is cured, and it can now uh, not be regurgitating. What kind of random objects were they regurgitating? Mm, because I'm using Olana's ducky dice, I'm going to say that they were regurgitating rubber duckies. Did they eat them, or were they just appearing magically in their mouth? Who knows? Either way. Yeah, I agree. This game is hilarious, and rocks are tasty. Who doesn't love rocks? For legal reasons, don't eat rocks, people. Okay. Next patient. Got the six of hearts. I should probably move all these cards out of my way. And that would be... Ooh, okay. The Ozark Howler, which is neat because the Ozarks are, at least mostly, here in Missouri. Uh, it is a feline with glowing eyes and twisted horns. They are very spoopy. I like them. And... We've got the Nine of Spades as our ailment, which is <laughs> a perpetual emission of rancid, rancid stench intolerable to loved ones. So, yeah. Um, the Ozark Howler becomes a skunk ape, apparently. And let's see. How many... Of our cures. Ooh, five. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to say the Ozark Hour because it's a little bit uh, more reclusive than some of the other cryptids. It has been probably experiencing this for like three weeks. Um, they've been coping by... They tried getting, like, sprayed by a skunk, hoping that it would cancel out, like, two stinks just nullify each other. It didn't work. Uh, the old, like, oatmeal bath or tomato soup bath remedy, that didn't work. Um, yeah, just having a, having a bad time of it. Hi, Aaron. Welcome to the cryptid hospital. No moth people yet. But, you know, still got time for that. Let's see. So we got five of our cures. So that's one. I just guessed, Aaron, I took a wild guess that you might like cryptids or that I might like cryptids I had no idea and I can't count I have no idea if I'm actually drawing the right number hold on holy crap I have no idea how I did that so this is a lot um, this is a the most things that we've had to draw for our uh, ingredients for this magical cure. So first we've got half a bottle 
of a tea of forgetfulness. So we're going to make the Ozark Howler forget that it stinks. And then rainbow striped tannis root. That tracks. I have no idea what you're talking about, Alana. We don't all like cryptids. That's ridiculous. Who would do that? Uh, next, we've got powdered something. Powdered honey. Okay. That tracks. Um, <laughs> deep fried pomegranate seed. Okay. Makes sense. I get it. They are from Missouri, so it is what it is. And frozen, oh, bizarre. Delightful. All right, we're going to go in reverse order on how they take each of these. So, got a five for the first one. So, they take with second breakfast their frozen bizarre. Um, Hold on. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's delightful. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Bazaar is a mass often found trapped in the gastrointestinal intestinal system. Uh, delightful. So glad that's their second breakfast. I'm so happy for them right now. Fun. Next, we've got nine. So, sprinkle liberally on self in the midst of the season's first snow. Uh, yeah, I don't know, Aaron. In the Wikipedia article, it didn't specify frog or goat or anything like that. Uh, it just said in general. So, I don't know. Um, so they liberally sprinkle on themselves their deep fried, um, pomegranate seed. Wait, why am I even then? I don't understand. Very confused. Eight. Ooh, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know any of the things. I know nothing. I am Jon Snow. Um, so this one, they have to avoid eye contact again for at least a week after taking. That was our powered honey. And then 11, okay. Um, yeah, again, they take while walking literations around a stranger's home. And this one is our rainbow striped tannis root. I can see now why they only go up to three on this because it's a little bit much. To do five. Um, then our half bottle of tea of forgetfulness. Nine. They again sprinkle liberally on self in the midst of the season's first snow. So hopefully, hopefully in this fictional world. It hasn't already snowed because otherwise the Ozark Heller is going to smell terrible until next year. But you know what? They're cured eventually. It just takes a little while. They're just a stinky little guy for the rest of the year. But I did it. I'm so good at this. Best doctor ever. Ooh. Um, probably our last patient, even though that means this is a pretty short stream. Um, we have the five 
of Hearts, which is an a hool. Again, I don't know this one, so I'm gonna look it up. But the description it gives is a noisy primate with enormous bat-like wings. Oh my god, this this thing's adorable. I want all of them. Gimme. Um, according to cryptozoology.fandom.com, not sponsored, uh, Ehul are from the island of Java. Yeah. It's named after its long call, a long Ehul. Which is adorable. I love them. I want all of them. And I'm going to cure this one and befriend it. So let's do it. Let's go. Ailment. It's the six of spades. Its own shadow gains partial solidity and interferes with daily life. Uh, I can imagine while it's trying to fly, if its shadow suddenly became uh, semi-solid, that it would weight it down a little bit and might make it hard to fly. So that tracks. That's 100% uh, sensible. I'm going to say that it has been trying to deal with this. We're going to give this one the longest time yet. Uh, it's been going for like six months. It tried going to uh, the cryptid gym, you know, planet cryptid, and uh, working out, and it just hasn't been hasn't been doing it. Hasn't quite uh, helped to balance out their their shadow being semi solid. Um, let's see. Unrelated yet charming anecdote. Hmm. I'm going to say that, you know what, this one is going to be related. I don't care what they said about it being unrelated. Uh, I'm going to say that this Ahul's partner has really liked that they have been hitting the gym, even though they can't fly now. Um, they like the, uh, the buffness. They're into it. So, you know, you win some, lose some, right? But... Let's draw our cards. And I'm going to actually follow the rules this time. I'm only going to draw three because I got a five. And so, got one, two. Oh, and that's perfect. I had just enough cards for three more. So, we first have Bioluminescent. Cosmic eggshell. That's our first ingredient. Next up is um, got those mixed up. Um, nine. A feathering of actual gold from an actual fool. I love that. And reflection of Oriculon. I know that from somewhere. I just don't know what the heck it is. Uh, and, you know, I mumbled it because I'm probably spelling that incorrectly. Or not spelling, saying it incorrectly. I can do words. Ooh. Uh... Yeah, Oriculum is a metal mentioned in several ancient writings, including the story of Atlantis in the Critus by Plato. It is considered second only to gold in value and had been found in mind in many parts of Atlantis in ancient times, but that was by Critus's own time. Um, oh, but that by Critus's own time, Oriculum was only known by name, not... Uh, because they had it around. And again, according to Wikipedia, uh, it may have been a noble metal like platinum. Interesting. Good to know. So hopefully our little 
flying monkey pal does not have to eat metal. That would be unfortunate. So first up, we got seven. Okay, yeah, no, they just have to keep the metal uh, beneath their pillow. Excuse me for nine consecutive sleeps. We've gotten that one quite a bit. So we'll put that one aside. And then our feathering of actual gold from an actual fool. They also keep under their pillow for nine consecutive nights. And then our bioluminescent cosmic eggshell, the avoid eye contact for a week after taking. So, yeah, um, a lot of the same ones. The dice roll uh, seems to be the least random of all of these, but that's okay because I'm the doctor and what I say goes. So, yeah, uh, I mean, I guess I could probably reshuffle and do another one if, uh, if we want. That's a good doctor. Everything's fine. Nothing's on fire. Yeah, I think that's probably a good place for us to call it. Let's uh, let's call that a successful doctor visit. And uh, we will see what we play next week. It may be this again. It may be something else. I don't know yet. But we will figure that out. And yeah, I will see you all. Mm. I'm trying to think. Aaron, do we have... We don't have any other streams for even footing set yet for this week, right? Yeah, cool. Uh, join us back here-ish because it's on both channels uh, on the Even Footing Games Twitch for uh, our Monster Hearts campaign wrap-up as we answer any questions that you may have had or just you know talk about all the bullshit and what we liked about the system. Uh, and then Wednesday at both of these will be 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we'll be here on HamPod to play a uh, Werewolf the Apocalypse one-shot. So that's what I got. All right. Well, it's been fun. Uh, it was not what I had planned, but uh, I like this game. It's pretty simple. Um, I wish that there was a little bit more to it. I think it's a little too straightforward in some ways, but... It's also a good way to just kill some time if you have nothing else going on. So anyway, thank you all for coming and watching, and uh, we'll see you next week.